I'm going to talk about day case chemonucleolysis, and uh, we have no conflict of interest in relation to this. Chemonucleolysis was introduced in Aberdeen in uh, patients in uh, 1982, and at that time we tended to keep patients in hospital two or three days. And later we felt an overnight stay was important, uh, mainly because that was the belief at the time. And in 1994 we did this day case study. In December 9, 2002 was the last chymopapian injection that I did. And you're probably wondering why I'm talking about it. But uh, I think it's important, I feel it's important to talk about chymopapia and chemonucleolysis because uh, there's a strong move afoot to bring it back onto the market and make it available again. And I think that would be a very good thing for our patients. In this, this was the protocol of this particular study. Uh, the patients were admitted in the morning. Procedure was carried out between 12 and 2 p.m. Patients were discharged in the evening. Uh, the analgesia was monitored with opiates, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, etc. And it was very simple, pain on a scale not to 10, preoperatively and daily afterwards, monitoring leg pain and low back pain. Uh, this is the standard approach on the, the needle position on the posterolateral corner of the disc, the so-called lateral approach that I'm sure most of you guys are uh, familiar with. And when you inject chymopapain, this is uh, injecting into a normal disc. This is the top as a cut through a disc showing the internal structure of the nucleus. And the bottom one is showing just a, an area where the chymopapain's work shows a, a jelly. Now, this is what actually happens in patients. When I did the procedure, I always injected uh, a small amount, 0.5 cc of a water-soluble uh, Die and uh, this is the AP view and the lateral view, and uh, you can see the dye actually passing into the herniation there. Now, when you inject chymopapain, this is what happens: the the chymopapain passes through the cleavages in the disc and into the herniation, and it digests the whole structure. And you can see that's happened there. And it also, if you're able to look closely, you would see it in the herniation as well, and that's how it works. It's a very simple procedure. It does what we're trying to do when we do a discectomy, uh, but it doesn't do any extra damage. It simply removes the nucleus and the, the damaged, uh, the, the herniated disc. Using a small, uh, a large bore needle, first of all, and then a railroading technique, it's possible to get the needle into the center of the disc and do the injection. Position is very important, as in all of these procedures, because you want to get a true AP and a true lateral view to be sure that you get the needle into, easily into the center of the disc. And the procedure takes no more than half an hour. And very often, more quickly, you draw up the material and inject it slowly into the disc, and that's it done. Now, I believe the anesthetic protocol was very important, and all the patients, we pre-medicated them with cyclomorph uh, an hour preoperatively. And it's very important to have a large bore Venflon IV inserted with a small amount of normal saline running, because there's always the scare of anaphylaxis. And I did over 2,000 cases, and I saw one anaphylaxis. Uh, immediately, by pre-procedure, patients given a little midazolam just to sedate them, and then some local anesthetic is injected into the skin and muscle uh, down to the disc. Immediately prior to the injection, the anesthetist gives a small amount of propofol, which just makes the patient nod off to sleep, and then you do the injection. And propofol works very quickly. They waken up seconds later, and uh, the, the injection's over. And most patients waking up, 60% of them, we did an, an audit, uh, say, well, the leg pain's a lot better straight away. And the straight leg raising's improved for most of them. This is a consecutive series of patients. They were randomized to standard care with one overnight stay and a day case only patients. Uh, there were 30 patients in the study. Uh, this is the split. The average age in the control, 39.4, day case, 43.7, range 16 to 74. 
I didn't select patients. If they were suitable for surgery, they were suitable for chemonucleolysis. And I never saw a reason to change that attitude. These are the scores for leg pain over the subsequent weeks. Uh, and these are the scores for back pain. I think back pain is a little bit more difficult to observe. The pain that they had was always was usually buttock pain, on one side, the same side as the root pain, and it's probably a residual of uh, nerve irritation that takes a while to settle down. There was one reaction that I called an anaphylactoid reaction, where the patient's blood pressure dropped a bit afterwards, but it came back up with a liter of saline. And this is a patient who had had a previous chymopapian injection at another level, uh, not at the same level. Uh, recurrence after chymopapian is almost, almost never happens at the same disc. The patient had pre-medication with antihistamine for 24 hours afterwards, and it's quite possible that that was the cause of the drop in blood pressure and not necessarily the a reaction to chymopapian. So all patients went home as planned. Sorry, there's a mistake there. And they were very keen to do so, except for one patient who was kept in overnight because a, an overzealous nurse uh, felt sorry for this patient who was a bit nauseated and insisted to stay overnight. But the patient, despite the fact the patient wanted to go home. Uh, the analgesic requirement was pretty well the same in both patients. Uh, and most of them, a lot of them stopped taking it by the end of the first week. So experience with chemonucleolysis performed as a day case is that it is a day case procedure. And for uh, subsequent eight years afterwards, it was a day case procedure. Patients were allowed home whenever they felt they were ready to go home. And um, it's uh, feasible, it's very safe, it's very cost effective. And uh, patients found it a very acceptable procedure. Much preferred the idea than having surgery or any other procedure and uh, it's recommended. I've just published uh, long-term results of chymopapian compared to surgery and spine, uh, looking at the clinical outcome and radiological outcome, and there is absolutely no difference at 25-year follow-up. Thank you very much.